In this example, let's use calculus to sketch the curve of a graph using the first and second derivative. Here we're being asked to graph the equation y equals x to the third minus 3x squared. In general, one of the first things you want to consider when sketching the graph of a curve is if there are any asymptotes. This equation is a polynomial. There's not a variable in a denominator, and if there's not a variable in a denominator, there will be no asymptotes. Let's move on to finding the first and second derivative, which we will then use to discover the shape that this curve has. The derivatives are very simple in this problem. The first derivative, using the power rule on each term in the original equation, is 3x squared minus 6x. And the second derivative is 6x minus 6. It is often useful in the next step to have the factored version of these derivatives. So for the first problem, 3x squared, or the first derivative, 3x squared minus 6x, we factor a 3 out to the front. We get 3x times the quantity of x minus 2. And for the second derivative, 6 times the quantity of x minus 1. Now, the first and second derivative provide two important pieces of information when sketching the curve. The first derivative has zeros that are called critical numbers. These are possible values of extreme, these are possible extreme values in the curve. And so to find the zero of the first derivative, we'll set each factor equal to zero. 3x equals zero and x minus 2 equals 0 means that x equals 0 and x equals 2 are what are known as critical numbers. Setting the second derivative equal to 0 yields x equals 1, and this is called a possible point of inflection, also known as a PPI. We'll use those critical numbers and possible points of inflection in the next step. Now that we know that the first derivative is 3x times the quantity of x minus 2, and that the critical numbers are x equals 0 and x equals 2, and the second derivative is 6 times the quantity of x minus 1, and the possible point of inflection is x equals 1, we'll use that information to organize all of the data that we can figure out about this curve into a table. And this table will include uh, five columns, the middle three being labeled f of x, f prime of x, and f prime prime of x. And the rows are going to be based on intervals that are created by both the critical numbers and the possible points of inflection. There are three total. 0, 1, and 2 in order from lowest to highest, and that creates four intervals. An interval from negative infinity to the lowest critical number or possible point of inflection, 0. I'm going to skip a line. And the second interval will be from 0 to the next lowest one, which is 1. Then from 1 to 2. And then because 2 is the, is the highest critical number or possible point of inflection, the last interval is 2 to infinity. Between each of these intervals, I'm going to include the actual x value that was the critical number or possible point of inflection. And I'm going to complete this table by looking at the first and second derivative for each interval. And I won't consider the original function when looking at the intervals. And for each of the x values, I'm going to look at the original function and not consider the first and second derivative for those. In each interval, I'm going to consider only the first and second derivative and use what's uh, use the property that curves have that if a number in an interval is po has a positive first derivative, that means that the function is increasing at that point. Between negative infinity and zero, if I would choose a value like negative one, and plug that into the first derivative. I'm not really concerned with the actual value f prime of, of uh, negative 1. I'm just concerned with its sign, if it's positive or negative. And it turns out the sign of f prime of negative 1 is positive. And it is true that any number in the interval from negative infinity to 0 will have a positive first derivative. 
The second derivative is negative. The second derivative tells you about the concavity of the curve in that interval. If the second derivative is positive, the graph is concave up over that interval, and if it's negative, it's concave down. Finding that the first derivative is positive and the second derivative is negative between negative infinity and zero tells me that in that interval, the curve is increasing from the first derivative and concave down from the second derivative. And that's a shape. An increasing concave down curve will look like this. This is an example of a curve that is increasing and concave down. And whenever I go to actually sketch the curve, I'll be putting this shape, I'll be drawing this shape in the interval from negative infinity to zero. The next interval I'll look at is from zero to one. I'll choose a test value in that interval. So one half and testing one half in the first derivative, I find that that, that value is negative. And in the second derivative, it's also negative. And that means between zero and one, this curve is decreasing and it's concave down. First derivative is negative, it's decreasing. Second derivative is negative, it's concave down. A curve that is decreasing and concave down will have this general shape. Between 1 and 2, choosing a test value of 1.5, I find that the first derivative is negative and the second derivative is positive. That means that the graph is decreasing and concave up. An example of a curve that is decreasing and concave up looks like this. Between 2 and infinity, choosing a test value of 3, I find that the first derivative is positive. The second derivative is positive. That means the curve over the interval from 2 to infinity is increasing and concave up. We'll have this general shape. So now I know from negative infinity to positive infinity the way that this curve will look. Uh, from negative infinity to 0, it'll be increasing and concave down. From 0 to 1, it'll be decreasing and concave down. And then from 1 to 2, it'll be decreasing and decreasing and concave up. And from 2 to infinity, it'll be increasing and concave up. So the curve will have this general shape, this general shape. I'll use the x values for the critical numbers and possible point of inflection to, to find out exactly where on the coordinate plane this shape will be located. When x equals 0, f of x, f of 0 is equal to 0. And, and again, I found that by, by evaluating f of 0. When x equals 1, f of 1 will be negative 2. When x equals 2, f of 2 is negative 4. So these are three points, three actual ordered pairs that I know uh, occur on the graph of this curve. Knowing those three points and the shape of the graph in the four intervals is going to allow me to draw a fairly accurate graph. Now let's use the information from the table to actually sketch the curve. In the table we found three ordered pairs that are actually points on the graph of this equation. We found that f of 0 is equal to 0, f of 1 is negative 2, and f of 2 to be negative 4. I'll count two units on the x and y axis on this coordinate plane as one value. So 0, 0 is right here, and 1, negative 2 will be at this location. I'll say that each, each slash on this coordinate plane is understood to be half of a unit. So this is the point 1, negative 2. The point 2, negative 4 would be right here. So plotting those three points, those are all points on the curve, doesn't tell me a lot about uh, the actual shape of the graph if those were the only things that I had to go by. But we also know the shape of the graph in each interval. We know that from, from negative infinity to zero from our table, the graph is increasing and concave down. Looks like this. And from zero to one, we know that the graph is decreasing and concave down. So it looks something like this in that interval. From 1 to 2, we found that the graph is decreasing and concave up. And from 2 to infinity, it's increasing and concave up. I'm going to start out 
by graphing the two middle intervals. And the reason that I'm starting with those is because from zero to one, there are points at the endpoints of that interval. I know exactly where that interval begins and ends. It begins at x equals zero and it ends at x equals one. And between those two ordered pairs, zero, zero, and one, negative two, the graph is decreasing and concave down. So I'm gonna do my best to draw a smooth curve that is decreasing and concave down between those two points. And then between x equals one and x equals two, the points one, negative two, and two, negative four, the graph is decreasing and concave up. A curve that is decreasing and concave up will have this general shape. And then I know at the, at the start of the graph, uh, from negative infinity to zero, the graph is increasing and concave down, but I'm not exactly sure how that could be, how that should be drawn. I could draw a lot of different curves that are decreasing and concave down but only one of them represents the accurate, accurate graph, the accurate curve that represents this equation. So what I'll do is I'll plot another point. If I, if I want to better draw a, an increasing and concave down curve between negative infinity and zero, I want to, I want to take a look at where this curve is at the x value of negative one. When I put a negative one into the original function and evaluate f of negative one, find that I get a negative 4. So the point negative 1, negative 4 is on this curve. And so now I'll draw a, a curve that is increasing and concave down that goes through that point. And I can do that more accurately if I know that it passes through negative 1, negative 4. Additionally, on the right side of this graph, from 2 to infinity, I know that the graph is this should be 2 to infinity. I know that the graph is increasing and concave up, but I don't know exactly how to draw that shape. If I put a, a 3 in for x in the original equation, I find that the, the y value then is 0. So 3, 0 is also a point on this curve. And so I can more accurately draw a curve that is increasing and concave up if I know that it passes through the point 3, 0. So here I have a rough sketch of the graph of y equals x to the third minus 3x squared, and I got that using the first and second derivative.